in this section, we're going to talk about the limiting or enabling factors on any piece of land. When I was first asked to explain how it was that I work with landscapes and how I see landscapes, one of the ways I explain that is through something similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs in the human body. So for all of us, the number one limiting factor to, to being able to survive and thrive is air. How long can you survive without oxygen? Might be like three minutes. Then our next most critical need for life is water. How long can you survive without water? Maybe three days. Then nutrition, how long without food? For some of us around three weeks. Uh, and this is how I look at soil, except in the soil ecosystem and with plant health, the number one limitation to growth is sunlight energy. How well can I capture sunlight and then convert that into all the byproducts that microbiology are able to take into the soil, but also how the plant will take those different metabolites that it collects from sunlight energy and then converts that to everything that makes the plant from leaves to roots. Right, the next factor is air. Plants cannot survive long without good airflow. So if we have compaction, that's one of the number one places we start to look at what's causing that compaction. How do we address that because it's going to shut down your microbiology. And then we look at water. Most producers think that water is the number one factor to limiting or enabling growth, but actually it's number three. So what is happening with water movement? Do we see water on the surfaces? Is it moving down through that profile evenly? Then I look at decomposition. What's happening with any plant material that's on that surface, plant roots, are they breaking down really, really quickly? Is this gut system functioning? And that's way before I start looking at all the macro and micro elements. And what you find is most of the salespeople that you deal with are dealing with number five in terms of what is it that makes a plant healthy and thrive. So dig a hole. Take a look. Do you have shallow rooting systems? Have you got thatch development? So that's the undecomposed plant material, roots, litter, grass clippings building up. How does water move through your environment? Do you see it ponding or pooling up in certain areas? Or do you see big changes in volumetric water? You know, what is happening with your water cycle? Are we storing the water that we can store? Are you increasing your water use efficiencies? Then do we have those clumping grass clippings? Are we seeing nutrient density in terms of the grasses that we're growing so that these grasses um, are more able to withstand stress, um, that they are breaking down very, very quickly? And then take a look at the growth across your fields. Do you see an evenness of color or do you see the plants growing very pale and uneven? So if you have any of these issues, then I would like you to consider how is your management undermining or compromising your underground microbiology? Because they are your literally your free workforce in this space. And as one old livestock producer once said to me, if you've got livestock, you've got dead stock. So how do we manage for something that's living underneath the ground so that we can really benefit from all that soil microbiology and soil health has to provide to us.